aside from the, the fact that there was political disturbance and turmoil at the time, brought about not only material uh, deprivation, but brought as well, imperceptibly, many psychic, emotional, psychological damage to the country, especially to the Filipino youth, who had nothing positive to look forward to. And it was the genius of uh, the late Chairman George T. to instill and to uplift the damaged morale uh, of the Filipino youth uh, through art. So he wanted to do something to mobilize the energies of our young people. So the predecessor of the Metrobank Art and Design Excellence was really conceptualized by him. He was the one who started it in 1984, the Young Painters Annual, the Made Painting Competition in 1984. The paintings generated by uh, Maid are able to uh, be a reflection of uh, the tensions, the conflicts, uh, the joys, the harmonies, the sorrows even, the despair and the celebration of the Filipino psyche. In the 1980s, you see a lot of our entries going into social realism. The art scene uh, then was so different. Uh, there were only few people going to our uh, art exhibits. My process is uh, traditional. I do a lot of uh, studies uh, before I work on a big canvas. I won second prize in the oil category in uh, 1988. At that time, I was uh, very active politically. That piece is a um, commentary on leaders who are abusive uh, to its own people. It helps to be introduced in the galleries during the 90s as an award-winning artist. And uh, it gives you the opportunity to have a show in the mainstream galleries. Down to the 90s, for example, where even the issues of the 80s continued to be pursued, and there were certain aspects of, uh, shall we say, existentialism. In 1995, when I came in, I reviewed what has happened since 1984, and I said, maybe we can consult the young artists. So we, we put up the Young Painters Annual. The art scene was probably five times smaller than the art scene now. You from 8 to 12 in number of galleries. Tapos, walang internet, walang cable, walang cell phone. Nagsisimula siya sa idea, tapos gagawa ko ng drawings. Sa ngayon, gumagamit na rin ng, ng computers para dun sa mga metal frames. Kasi maraming bahagi yung trabaho. After that, susubukan siya sa loob kasi isa-scout pa siya. So maraming trial and error sa sa gawang ito. Yung biyahe na yun, papuntang Antipolo, doon ko nakita yung image na yun, na parang fish eye. Tapos naisip ko, magandang painting ko. Ito yung sasalik sa Metrobank. Na last trip. Gabi na kasi noon. Ano. Pag Metrobank winner ka, para kang Miss Universe. <laughs> May corona ka ng isang taon. <laughs> Towards the uh, turn of the century, uh, you can see the manner by which the young Filipino artists are looking outside their own country and being influenced by other uh, developments, idioms being done in, in the art centers of the world. Then we also saw over the years the introduction of technology. And so uh, we decided to get involved in architecture and interior design. Uh, winning the MAID competition back then was very crucial and helpful in allowing me to be exposed to other platforms. You know, we just need to do all these different things to give, uh, you know, more depth into our social ecosystem, to contribute to, you know, different ways of responding to the world. I usually go out to where the people go, and that's where I find the most interesting things. I find pleasure in kind of transforming these familiar objects into something unfamiliar and have uh, the, the people who, who see them and uh, observe them uh, realize this, you know, from something strange and uh, upon close inspection, it's something very common, apparently. 
The piece that I made for the maid competition back in 2005 was called Cradle. It was a sawdust sculpture that was built over a, a wireframe. And uh, it's a technique that our mentor back in Philippine High School for the Arts, Mr. Roberto Fileo, as a way to uh, create cost-efficient sculptural work. Positive creative production is just a very human condition, which uh, everyone needs to at least try maybe once in their lives. Next start pala mag boom yung art. So tingin ko maswerte kami ng lahat kasi nando kami sa tamang oras, tamang panahon, nag boom yung career namin lahat pati yung mga friends ko. Lalo na ngayon kasi ngayon mas marami ng gallery, mas marami ng collectors, kumbaga mas marami ng lugar kung saan ka pwede mag-show. Nagko-observe ako madalas kung ano nangyayari sa akin or sa paligid ko. Lalo na kapag nagkakram ako, hindi ako makatulog. Tapos parang, ah, bigla lang pumapasok yung idea. Pero kapag kasobrang ang dami ko naisip, lahat siya sinusulat ko kasi hindi talaga ako lagi inspired. So at least kapag wala akong maisip, tumitingin lang ako doon sa mga sketches ko or doon sa drawing ko or kung ano nakasulat sa phone ko. Yung title niya patungo sa so watercolor on paper. So yung ginawa ko, uh, ulo siya ng aeroplano. Tapos katawan lang siya ng parang stick lang. Tapos nilagyan ko lang siya ng blue color kasi worker. Um, kasi ako yung nagtutok para sa Metrobank. Yung mga tao na nakikilala kong bago, yung mga bata, yung mga sudyante. Nakakatuwa kasi nakaka-inspire ka ng iba. Through the work that we do in the foundation, our program made, we were able to utilize art for advocacy work. Art is a very powerful tool. It is not our national soul, but it has the ability to ignite social change and cultivate ideas. Art describes identity of a developing or developed nation. It expresses how an artist feels and thinks at that particular moment. And uh, art also describes who we are and where we're going. I had very equipped professors in art high school that made sure that we learn the value of art uh, as a tool for change, something that evolves depending on the issues and concerns of the community. I'm not comfortable that it's positioned only to the privileged few. A lot of people should engage with the work, pero sa lipunan natin, parang kulang pa siguro yung pagkalat sa kanya. We have always looked as made as a competition. Over time, there is a responsibility to the young artists as a whole. So we decided to programmatize our intervention for young people. And we introduced the IDEA framework, inspiration, development of skills, exposure, and application. We wanted in the long term to develop our young people so we have institutionalized incentives, program improvements every year. Something that we'd like to continue by bringing them to art spaces, not only the institutional ones like museums, but also in malls where people congregate. And that should be part of our advocacy, bringing art closer to the people. Young artists need to uh, focus on their art without uh, any distraction. So I suggest MADE no, to create an artist uh, residency program to provide uh, the artist studio space and uh, allowance for art materials and uh, living expenses. I'd like to think that art and artists are catalysts of society. I view our artists as producing new realities, new narratives, new ways of looking at things. And that is the history of Maid.
Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday and welcome to another installment of the Art Made Public online series. In our previous episodes, we got to meet the MADE awardees from different generations and to talk to them about their artistic journey. But MADE goes beyond celebrating artistic excellence. MADE is also about advocating for our cultural heritage. We believe that a good artist is also someone who celebrates being a Filipino. Together with the Center for Filipino Architecture, Arquitecturang Filipino, Architect Rico, Facade Books, and the United Architects of the Philippines, we celebrate the National Heritage Month this May by exploring our rich architectural heritage. Make sure to tune in to get a chance to win your very own copy of Crocus, a primer on Philippine architecture. Watch out for the contest questions in our comment section here over Facebook Live. Send in your inquiries and you could be one of the three lucky winners to receive a copy, your very own copy of the book. MADE will also be giving e-certificates to requesting attendees who will be able to pass the assessment test to be provided after the webinar. Today, we are joined by one of the leading professionals on architectural and cultural studies, Dr. Gerard Lico. Dr. Lico is a professor at the College of Architecture of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and practices architecture as a conservation professional and designer of institutional buildings. He is a prolific author on Filipino architecture and cultural studies. He served as the consulting architect for the rehabilitation of the Rizal Memorial Stadium in 2019 and is the present consulting architect for the city of Valenzuela. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Nico by sending your heart reactions over Facebook Live. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. I'm Professor Gerard Lico and I'm here to present my lecture today, Styling the 20th Century, 100 Years of Philippine Art and Architecture. So if we are to look back, the 20th century was a period of creating or recreating modernity. Uh, so sa panahong ito, ng buong century, uh, ano na maraming influences no, ranging from American colonialism, war, no? Uh, post-independence, euphoria, nationalism, and even uh, the Bagong Lipuna no, have shaped no, the different art and architectural forms during the period. So here we see that art and architecture does not exist in, the, in a vacuum. No? They are influenced no, by, by the shifts no, in, in our society. No? So this cultural shift have shaped no, and reshaped architecture and the art forms no, in the Philippines. So, tignan natin, no, uh, isummarize natin muna yung pagtingin natin sa art and architecture noong 20th century. No? So, in, in this slide, no, you will see that I divided no, the 20th century into different phases. No? From the 1900s to the 1910s, so it was dominated by the logic of the City Beautiful movement. No? So, of course, uh, this is uh, no, no, guided no, by the American authorities who sought to recreate no, or create uh, a tropical, no, a tropical empire no, as a showcase of their power no, as, a, as a new player in the global arena. No? So it, it was also characterized by colonial modernity. No? So they, they, they set no, uh, the infrastructure, the materials, and the norms no, and the social forms no, that facilitated colonial modernity. No? And uh, this was, no, and this was uh, stylistically uh, represented by neoclassicism. No? Neoclassicism as a style represented democracy. And it is through this style that the Americans uh, seem to proclaim that they are preparing us for self-government. No? So by the 1920s and the 1930s, uh, the Philippines was dominated by a new style. No? 
So it was anti-classical and it, it harks back no, to the exotic and uh, adopted no, the speed and efficiency of the machine age. No? And this is art modern and streamlining. No? So later on, we will see the influence of the machine, the ocean liners, and the uh, objects. No? The objects that defies uh, yung speed. No? And then the 1940s uh, was a, a period of destruction no? B because uh, we were occupied by Japan no? and uh, this dis destruction uh, changed no? the lives of many Filipinos and this destruction also paved the way no? for modernity to flourish no? in the post-war years no? because modernity no? was, was about the use of uh, no, no, um, no nonsense volumes no? simplified geometries and the the denouncement no, of ornament so it was aligned with post war austerity so kailangan tanggalin yung ano no mga excessive ornament because uh, kailangan kailangan masagot yung demand no for post war reconstruction yung housing yung the need for buildings no for the new bureaucracy and the 1950s no uh, it is a period of uh, nationalism, no? post-independence Philippines, the, and at the same time, modernity no? was was adopted no? as the official style of our government. No? But it was it was a different type of modernity. No? It was tropical. No? By the 1960s, we saw no? the blandness of modernism, no? and uh, we wanted to to infuse. No? New modernism sa Pilipinas with a brand of uh, familiar vernacular motif. So there was vernacularization. So makikita natin yung mga salakot, mga kalabaw, at saka yung mga ano na familiar na motif ng pagka-Pilipino, no? So by the 1970s, no, and through the 80s, we were under martial law, no? So this was a period of uh, cultural renaissance, no? Or vernacular renaissance so to speak. This was a period of uh, bagong lipunan. No? This was meant to rejuvenate no? yung kultura ng Pilipino na, na, na um, tainted no? ng kolonyalismo. So, ang, ano, no? ang estilo ngayon ay directed towards the primeval, the vernacular. No? So, makikita natin yung ano, no? mga bagong anyo no? na nanggaling sa uh, pre-colonial past. No? Tapos, of course, the 1990s no uh, was a period of postmodernity no wherein the style no was anything goes uh, okay uh, let us begin no our our narrative no uh, colonial modernity no colonial modernity was about the use of techno science no so during this period there was emphasis on tropical hygiene no New material, no? uh, hygienic material was reinforced concrete and steel. Huh? Uh, I will explain later why there was a focus no, on, on hygiene no, and tropical uh, medicalization of space. No? So there was a new, uh, new building typologies no, that, was, that were introduced, no? designed for, I don't know, these were meant to be mass produced. No? So like the, yung mga kapitolyo, yung mga schools, no, yung mga Gabaldon school, they were standardized so that they can be ano, no, omnipresent, no? The American omnipresence uh, throughout the archipelago will be more palpable, no? And then there was a shift, no, from a feudal to industrial capitalism. So from ano, no, from an agrarian, no, based society, papunta tayo sa factory, no? So there was mass production and uh, for the same no? so uh, this modernity was uh, facilitated through public education no? so sports no meant to train the unfit no native bodies no uh, for self government so there was uh, in the indian no in the minds of the americans they were giving us civilization they were no uh, dispensing no civilization. No? So, uh, there was a no, transformation no, from barbaric to a civilized being. No? So, to do this, no, uh, an important ingredient no, of the 20th century style no, 
was made possible no? by the Bureau of Science. And this was the uh, discovery no? of a quarry no? uh, in Binangon and Rizal, no? wherein makakapag, ano na tayo, oh, kuha ng cemento, no? Portland cement. So, because cement no, was the material of modernity. No? So, madali mong ma makikreate yung mga infrastructure. Kasi dati, nag import tayo ng, ano, no, ng, ng cemento. Kung ang cemento ay nakakwari na sa, sa Pilipinas mismo, mas mapapadali ang modernization. So, uh, kaakibat no, ng, ng konkreto ay iba't ibang mga imported no, technologies of, of construction. No? For example, Reinforced concrete, cantra system, precasting, no, which allowed no, uh, to fabricate uh, multiple no, ornaments, no, yung mga neoclassical ornaments, no, and then the use of concrete hollow blocks, and of course, concrete. No? So, so, if we are to look, to look back no, dun sa American period, there was, th these are the stages no, by which the society, the Philippine society, was... Uh, transformed no? and styled according to a civilizing no? paradigm. No? First, there was site clearance no? or hygienic no? uh, architectural intervention no? because the assumption that Filipinos no, were dirty and we were the vortex of infection, we were the reservoir of uh, pathogens, so that's why we need to be reformed. No? And this reform needs uh, new no new hygienic knowledge no so pag narinis na yung space na inoccupy ng Pilipino these spaces ni uh, are zoned no according to to function no? so there was zonification no so when you have a portion no the space no according to certain uh, logical function no? uh, you will install no? the, the 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 colonial regime installed the infrastructures of colonial modernity these are the invisible aspects of the city, for example, no, yung, yung sewer lines, electricity, no, tra uh, mass transit system, etc., etc. No, this uh, facilitates no the, the efficient no uh, operation of the city. No, and then after you have installed this uh, networks, no, invisible networks, uh, you will you will ano, no, the, the the regime, no, the colonial regime would build no the architecture of imperial display. No? and that will create no an urban spectacle no so these buildings no were monumental and they were so designed no to solicit obedience no to the new colonial authorities so the first ano, no, the first uh, events no was a massive cleanup no? because the early years of american colonization was beleaguered by a series of uh, epidemic diseases no attributed to the unhygienic uh, practices of the Filipinos. So we had cholera, bubonic plague, and this required no major revision in terms of the spaces that Filipino inhabit. So there was house-to-house uh, -house disinfection. No? Take for example the ad yung pag-administer ng carbolic acid sa sa mga bahay bahay no? as a, as a form of disinfection. So this actually parallel no the the way. Uh, we ano no, we we address no our pandemic now no so merong quarantine no so there was a war on germs no so uh, 100 years ago there was a war on germs no and uh, this parallels the the way we quarantine and survey no, the filipino body so there was a sprinkling of the streets no so for example these epidemic diseases no triggered uh, a major revision no, in the domestic architectural form. No? So, uh, nagkaroon ng ano, no, rat-proofing of buildings. No? Uh, katulad dito, nakikita natin sa picture, uh, sinisil off no, yung, yung mga gaps no, dun sa kawayan so that hindi makakapasok yung daga because yung daga ang nagdadala ng, ng plague infection. No? So, the introduction no, of, of a new of a new uh, neighborhood no neighborhood or ano no system no planning system no we call it the sanitary barrios no which allowed individual nipa houses to be built no on on an individual lot no so 
itong ano no, the the sanitary barrio was actually the the forerunner no of of our subdivision development in the country no so there was also the the ano no yung the sanitary model house of 1917 no which uh, was a successful no uh, foray no in inventing no? the material for the roofing no to replace yung nipa because nipa was highly flammable and uh, the urban fires no were attributed no to the nipa houses no in manila so uh, there was a ano no a law no that that will gi- that gave no a reward of 15,000 to anyone who will invent a material that could replace no, nipa as a roofing material so there was a major no revision of of uh, no, no, of communities of architecture especially during the cholera plague there was no uh, burning of houses so this was no taken no as a means to control diseases no so the bahay kubo no was uh, transformed no and because the bahay kubo was seen as uh unhygienic no so the toilet no was introduced no so here no in the early 20th century the toilet was a marker of modernity no it changed the lives of the filipinos no towards ano no a clean lifestyle so ito yung tinatawag nating episode sa philippine uh, biopolitical no kasi yung everyday life no yung biological life no nung tao no ay kinokontrol mo yung pagkain yung defecation no so take for example uh, uh, the toilet no uh, is what we call kubeta no kubeta kasi they were kubeta is literally ang ibig sabihin niya ay pail no so kasi pail system ang ginamit kasi manila was unseaworthy so this uh, pail no this kubeta are collected every day no and disposed of they were thrown in in ano no meron siyang sariling meron siyang sariling ano no barge no papunta sa sa ano manila bay kung saan itinatapon yung mga mga ano no mga dumi ng tao so Uh, the Americans were keen no, on on reinventing no, the Filipino toilet. They, there was a fascination no, uh, with uh, the toilet no, as a as an index of modernity. So, and dami daming toilet na na, na invento, no? So, because for them, not for the American authorities, the Filipinos were promiscuous defecators. So. Yeah. So uh, we see a marked change no in in the architecture no. So the sanitary model house no became no, uh the uh, no, no the symbol of modern domesticity no. And, and together with the sanitary barrios no. So uh the sanit also in this in this uh, no, no, in the knowledge no in the scientific knowledge of the Americans they they were to invent no uh, a new building a new domestic prototype no and this was the chalet no so the chalet was uh, was a compartmentalized space no and then it 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 had good ventilation and it was well suited for a for a tropical lifestyle so yeah so manila no was also envisioned to become a beautiful city no diba city beautiful no so na clear na yung sites of pa- of pathogen so kailangan itayo na yung mga buildings that will speak of american imperial power no and this was made possible no through through the through this the design no to, through the master plan of daniel h burnham no the father of the city beautiful movement so city beautiful movement was simply Uh, a very classical no classical way of arranging the city no with uh, uh, long processional boulevards no that terminates to a beautiful monumental structure ideally no of na temple like no na of greco roman descent no kasi nga yun ang gustong iano no parang washington dc no so when we talk of ano no when we talk of city beautiful no so manila was was ano no was modeled no according to to ano no, 
to the principles of the city beautiful. Now think of Paris, think of Washington DC, San Francisco. These are ano, ano, examples no, of city beautiful uh, planning. No? So ganyan dapat ang ano, no? ganyan dapat ang city of Manila. No? So that's supposed to be our capital in Luneta, no? So I don't know William Parsons no implemented the designs of I don't know the urban prescriptions no of uh, Burnham and he, he became no the consulting architect no for the Philippines no so for Parsons uh, he studied no yung yung bahay na bato no that's why if you look at the buildings no as a consulting architect no he he also designed uh, cities like Sambuanga, Cebu, no, and other, and other, along no, the city beautiful movement. So, notice in his design, no, in his design, for example, this Bilibid Hospital, no, uh, we can see that stylistically, no, William Parsons is employing no, the familiar bahay na bato, no elements like the capis windows no uh, and this was juxtaposed no with uh, with the language of neoclassicism no so titingnan natin dito no uh, bak bakit D these sets of buildings no uh, gives us no an idea uh, pag nakita natin ito parang there's a continuity no continuity of style no Take for example uh, this building he designed uh, for the University of the Philippines. No? You can see that it had no? uh, a classical uh, base, no? uh, ba? classical orders, and then at, at the upper level you will see obviously the bahay kubo, or the bahay na bato, no? the bahay na bato. So if you look at this building, it's uh, it's an illustration. No? It's an illustration of the encounters of two cultures. No? Uh, the the meeting no? the unproblematic encounters of the native and the American so when we look at this building and we read them no? it's as if there is a harmonious coexistence no? of two cultures no? to the building so there is no? uh, cultural ano, no? cultural har harmony no? so tingnan natin tingnan natin yung mga example so like the PGH no? Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, the University of the Philippines, no, in in Manila, no, uh, clubhouses, no, and even, ano, no, and even uh, train stations, no. For example, this train station, no, this is this was his last work, no, and uh, you will see eagles, no. So eagles at the pediment, no. It's as if that uh, America, no, was. Uh, looking at no so para talagang ano no uh, the message is tutelage no? so uh, yung pinakamaraming buildings na na design ni Parson was the Gabaldon schoolhouses of course these were derived now from the Bahay Kubo no the tropical properties of Bahay Kubo so they are slightly elevated above ground and they are very tropical no I ibig sabihin uh, uh, ano no yung cross ventilation was maximized because at that at this time wala pang electricity tsaka ano no more on natural lighting kasi itong mga buildings na to were were ano no were were delivered no in the farthest reaches of of the archipelago no so ito yung na mass produced na building so the the doors the windows the blackboards and all of the components were standardized to bring uh, cost down no? so ito no ito yung mga example ng mga building sa idinisenyo ni Parson. So also in the 1910s no we saw the the, the rise of uh, multi-story structures no facilitated by reinforced concrete no. So of course uh na introduce din yung elevator so yung yung mga structures ay tumaas ng tumaas no. So yon no. So elevator was also an invention that made possible uh, our early no skyscrapers in manila so uh, in order to ano no in order to ensure no the development no uh, yung continuous development and production of buildings so there was a pensionado system no 
So, yung mga magagaling na Pilipino no, uh, ay pinag-aaral sa abroad no, to study architecture and engineering. And later on, no, these Filipinos uh, take on important roles no, in the bureaucracy. Take, for example, the Bureau of Public Works. No? For example, we have uh, Barreto, Mapua, Toledo, Arellano, and Nakpil no, who studied abroad and brought with them no, the language of Bozart neoclassicism. No? So basically, this uh, this is the ano, no? the style uh, up to no? uh, the dominant style up to the the 1920s. So the Bureau of Public Works no? dominated no? the the building production of this time. It was like a, a huge no? architectural firm. No? So sila yung nag uh, di design ng mga buildings no sa iba't ibang parte ng Pilipinas. So, uh, at this point in time also, we have Art Nouveau. No? But Art Nouveau was quite limited no, into applied small objects, furniture, no? uh, tsaka mga graphic design. So, may mga konti lang tayong Art Nouveau building. So, for example, yung Mariano Ichaco building, no? it's styled in the Art Nouveau style because Art Nouveau was, was not that, ano, no? dominant no in the early 20th century no? okay so even in fashion no, the, the gibson girl no was the uh, influential no in in the silhouette no of uh, the 1910s no so yung ano no even yung mga bar barot saya were modeled after that no? okay so we also see the influence of the manila carnival no in terms of uh, dispensing style no? So this was uh, the uh, no, no, uh, the colonial spectacle of the period. No? So wherein you will see uh, beauty, no? beauty and sports no? coming together. No? Kasi dyan din yung, ano, no, yung may mga, apart from beauty pageant, meron din mga ano, no, uh, sporting events dyan. So also the, the, the 1920s, 1919 in particular, was the birth no, of Philippine cinema. So, uh, cinema, no, uh, Philippine cinema, no? uh, yung pelikula ni Atang de Rama, yung uh, Dalagang Bukid. No? So, it was a film sarsuela. So, uh, bakit, ko, bakit ko sinasabi itong ano, ano, nung, yung pelikula? Because pelikula will birth a new building type. No? Big, ano, especially in the 1920s. So, let's go now to the 1920s and the 1930s. And this is the period of the art deco decadence and the jazz age. Uh, so, pero, uh, makikita natin in terms of the architectural profession, the, the, the ano, no? ito yung 1921, no? February 23, 1921, na professionalized no? yung architecture. No? So, architecture became a profession by virtue of assembly act number 2985 no? so this year we are celebrating the centennial of the architectural profession no and of the engineering profession no kasi ni-regulate na ng gobyerno yung practice na ito so dati maestro de obras lang ang ano no? ang, gu ang gumagawa ng building ngayon architects na talagang architects so ang architect number 1 i see Tomas Mapua. So, so Tomas Mapua also established a school in 1925, no, the Mapua Institute of Technology. No? So, so other universities no, followed suit, no, like UST no, uh, and Adamson. No? So, so did you know that Mapua no, uh, or Mapua, no, sabi nila, was the only school no, that operated during the uh, Japanese occupation because nakita ng mga Hapon yung necessity no ng mga engineers and architects no in in ano, no, in infrastructural development during the years okay so ito yung mga listahan ng mga arkitekto no kokonti pa lang ang arkitekto nung nung 1920s and 1930s no mabibilang lang sila uh, siguro mga less than 50. So, pero, nung 1934, no, unang nagkaroon ng babaeng arkitekto. No? So, sa katauhan ni Mercedes Rafinian. No? So, even after the, ano, no, uh, after the late 1940s, siya pa lang ang babae. So, yeah. Siya ang first woman architect. Siya din ang unang 
uh, babaeng graduate ng mapwa no sa larangan ng arkitektura yan so talagang ni recognize siya no? so so babae uh, becomes an, an important no uh, an important uh, mover no in the development of philippine architecture at at this time no? so also this period no, na na, na buo, no yung philippine architect society no which is a, an organization uh, that unified no uh, the 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 architects no as a profession and th this was headed by Juan Nakpil no? so this this is a no, no a class picture no of that organization the, the Philippine Architect Society which is the forerunner of uh, today's architectural organizations no uh, okay so in 1941 also there was an attempt not to create no um, an all inclusive no uh, design school no and this institution was the Philippine College of Design uh, the president no was uh, Nakpil no? however uh, because of the war hindi natuloy yung ano no yung eskwela no? okay ito yung mga courses and the faculty no if you look at the the roster of faculty you, you do a research no uh, talagang they, they were the stellar figures no of art and design no okay so by the 1940s uh, we have no this roster of architects kokonti pa lang no? so but ang, ang ano no if we are to look at the 1930s it was dominated by ano no Juan Arellano no who who was no who was the consulting architect no, of the bureau of pub of public works no and uh, he was the i don't know he was a celebrated architect now because he was the the figure no uh, the poster boy now for the independence movement kasi sa pamagitan niya no uh, nakikita dito sa excerpt na to noted architect once posed as wildman at jamestown because para makapag-aral siya ng architecture no uh, nagpanggap siya na na ano na, na display no na, na native no to be displayed kasi di ba usong-uso noon yung mga exposition no to to dramatize no yung role ng America as a civilizing agent no so dinisplay si Juan Arellano and kung babasahin mo tong article na to ang ang ano nito ay ano na napagtagumpayan na ng mga Pilipino yung kanilang barbaric state and Juan Arellano is an illustration of this major transformation now from barbaric to a renowned creative person no? okay kasi hindi lang siya painter so at this point in time the body no the filipino body was trained through physical education and they have achieved no the deco body no? the slim the ano the, the streamlined body which will will be reflected no in in the buildings no of the 1930s so as i've mentioned juan arellano was a leading figure no in ano, poster boy nga siya na independence movement so ang ano niyan ang argument diyan pwede niyo na kaming ano no ang argument ng mga lobbyists pwede niyo na kaming uh, bigyan ng independence because makikita niyo kay juan arellano na napagtagumpayan na, na, na ng kolonyalismo no yung pagbibigay ng education at saka culture no sa mga Pilipino no? so pwede na kami maging independent kaya na namin mag mag ano mag mag, mag self government no so titingnan natin yung mga gawa ni Juan Arellano halimbawa yung legislative building no makikita natin dito yung tagumpay niya yung mastery niya sa neoclassical style no? post office uh, as Billiamore Hall now which is this, the school of uh, conservatory music and fine arts no ng UP Manila no so these are beautiful building talagang na nakita natin yung virtuosity no ni Juan Arellano in terms of the Beaux-Arts style no okay. so pero makikita natin nag yung ano no yung transition niya no uh, to another style yung art deco in in the 1930s yung sa Metropolitan Theater kung saan it was an opportunity for him no to infuse the language of art deco with Filipino motifs bamboo mangoes 
uh, Birds of Paradise, etc., etc. So, it was a proclamation no, of uh, Filipino architecture in the context of a colonial society. No? So, here, makikita natin Art Deco through, through, through Juan Arellano was nationalized. No? Okay, so that's Juan Arellano. So, but Juan Arellano demonstrated his no, um, mastery no, of the streamlined modern in the Rizal Memorial uh, Coliseum, or Rizal Memorial uh, Stadium. No? So here, no, mapapansin natin, tahasan niyang iniwanan yung neoclassical style to embrace the streamlined no the streamlined modern unadorned no untainted with elements no untainted with classical orders no so in a way he was denouncing colonialism no but not civilization no? through this building so in, it also reflects no the the fascination of the period with the body beautiful no because the the building no is a manifestation of streamlining no? which parallels the streamlined bodies of the period so katulad nito no streamlining no? so pagdating ng ano no pagdating ng 1920s 1930s uh, nagsibalikan din yung second generation no? of Filipino architects sa katauhan ni Andres Una de San Pedro, Pablo Antonio, Fernando Ocampo, Nakpil and Mapua no this leading this uh, group of architects no, which we call second generation will introduce no, or I don't know ipapopularize nila yung art deco as a new style so Mapua no Mapua no through his house art deco he he also no, as I mentioned he he instituted no, the the first architectural school in the country in 1925. He designed no, the Centro Escolar University, and Andesuna de San Pedro is the son no, of uh, Juan Luna. No? So and he designed no, the most celebrated no, pre-war building, the Crystal Arcade. No? So the first uh, mall type no, of uh, mall type typology no so the crystal arcade so alam niyo ba na yung crystal yung crystal arcade na yan ay ano lang na podium lang siya ng ng ano no ng, ng isang mataas na building no yung mataas na building ito, together with the arcade is known as the crystal palace so however na, ano yan no? uh, hindi nagtake off yung project so napakaganda ng ano no napakaganda ng loob no uh, it it it's like uh, I don't know, you're inside no? uh, an ocean liner. Now you have simulated skylights. No? It's as if you are. I don't know, but it's very French no? because uh, Andres Luna de San Pedro no? studied architecture in, in, in Paris. No? So he also designed many residences. No? Uh, Art Deco. Uh, Layer, ni layer yung art deco sa bahay na bato. No? So, unknown to many, no, he also designed no, uh, the monument, no, the monument of Bonifacio in in ano, no, in Caloocan, no? So, but the sculptural, no, the sculptural figures, no, were by uh, Guillermo Tolentino, but the yung pinaka obelisk was his design. No? So we have also uh, Pablo Antonio, no, who designed the Far Eastern University, the White Cross, no, uh, the Ideal Theater. No? So Pablo Antonio may be considered as the the father, no, of uh, Philippine cinematic buildings, no, uh, sinihan, no, the father of the sinihan, no, kasi napakadami yung sinihan na 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 idinisenyo, no. Ganon din si Juan Nakpil, no? uh, Capitol, State Theater, Avenue Theater. No? So, for example, itong, ano, no? itong Capitol Theater, no? uh, makikita natin, no? was infused with Filipino elements. No? Like in the, ano, no? in the sculptural reliefs no? at the facade, no? 
represented by ano na, by figures na no? muses representing uh, music and cinema no so this was ano na, the figures were designed by Severino Fabi no not Francesco Monti no so this is the the lobby no the lobby also display no an important no an important painting because it, this was the collaboration of the uh, modernist triumvirate and that in that picture you will see also Severino Fabi. Uh, yeah. So I don't know because the Sinihan was an, an escape, no? So this was uh, for a mere price of a ticket, you can experience a beautiful building. So it's a very democratic space. No? So it's also a space of fantasy. Kaya pag punta mo sa lobby, ang ganda ganda, it's well decorated. No? So I don't know, uh, but it's an, an accessible, no? luxurious space. No? So, uh, the 1930s also, yung makikita natin yung streamlining, no? streamlining, wherein uh, speed, dynamism, and uh, yung, ano nga, yung iconography no? ng ocean liners were uh, transcoded no? into buildings, no? like, like these uh, buildings. So, for example, uh, the Lopez Mansion, no? designed by Fernando Ocampo in Iloilo. No? So, ayan, uh, nag-prosper naman ng, ano, ng Manila in, in the 1930s. So, there are many buildings. So, even the Art Deco no? would permeate uh, fashion. No? Take, for example, the, the, the Barot Saya no? would be layered no? with... Uh, sunburst motif, geometric motifs associated with the Art Deco. No? So, buildings and fashion would parallel each other. No? So, even yung, ano, no? even yung, yan, nakita natin yung damit ng Carnival Beauty Queens, no? yung mga triangulations, yung mga sunburst. No? And this can, this can also be seen in, in, ano, no? in furniture design. No? So another iconic furniture that we'll see in the period was the bilibid chair. No? It's a wicker chair uh, that was exported no? in, in, in a very very popular. So kaya sa tinatag na bilibid chair, uh, kasi yung mga prisoner no? sa bilibid ang nagbamanufacture nito. So ang mode to discipline no? the prisoner was factory setting. No? So nagiging ano sila na no? nagiging uh, productive sila. No? A productive so from from criminals to craftsmen no? okay so another style popular in the 1920s and 1930s is the neo castilian style so yung mga spanish revival na medyo florentine yung mga mga bahay so marami tayong makikitang ganyan may mga twisted columns may mirador tower no? so the commonwealth period was a peace time so uh, this is this is ano no uh, a stage no uh, a transition government no uh, sponsored by the americans para totally magkaroon na tayo ng independence it, so but the philippines became a world city no when we hosted the uh, international eucharistic no uh, uh, celebration no in 1937 so the ano no the this uh, no, no this was uh, no, no, uh, apart from uh, apart from celebrating the ascendancy of commonwealth no commonwealth regime it was also a moment no na, na the philippines is is an international city now together with ano uh, no yung 1934 uh, ano no uh, far eastern games no kung saan itinayo yung ano no yung Rizal memorial so these are instances in the 1930s kung saan pinapakita natin na ang pilipino ay capable na of hosting international events so this ano no hosting no demonstrate the ability of the pilipino no? for for organizing no uh, a, a bureaucracy something like that no so here no the centerpiece for the national uh, the international Euch eucharistic congress of 1937 was the the pylon no designed by uh, juan nakpil no? 
So, meron ding ano, no? meron din tayong arch no? of the Commonwealth designed by uh, Guillermo Tolentino. But, hindi na siya natuloy. So, uh, there was also no? uh, an idea no? to expand Manila no? uh, to the suburbs no? by creating Quezon City. No? But, uh, the Quezon City will not push through uh, muna no? because of, of, of an impending war. No? So, this was a period also kung saan si Amor Solo no? did advertisement, so the rise of Kenkoy. No? Uh, makikita natin no? in, in, in the visual arts, there was no? uh, a debate no? between the, the conservative and the modernist. No? So, makikita natin halimbawa yung mga works no? ni Fabian de la Rosa, ni, ni Amor Solo, yung mga feudal, no? uh, the ever-smiling dalagang Filipina versus the works of uh, the modernists like Victorio Edades, the builders which showed no? the asymmetric power relations, no? so, tsaka yung mga distortion, stylization, for example, here, uh, the Brown Madonna by Galo Ocampo. No? So, uh, there was this, ano, no? this uh, debate no? between the modernists and the conservatives. So, in terms of ano, no, streamlining, makikita din natin yung streamlining sa mga sa mga ano, no, sa mga furniture na dinisign uh, sa atelier ni Puyat, no, Gonzalo Puyat. For example, we have the ambassador chair, no, and even you will see now, no, the silhouette of the new Filipina, no, of a slim, uh, lean figure. No? So, medyo nawawala na yung ano, no? yung 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 balot na balot, no? no? So, there's a there it there's a a start, no, of a uh, uh, Filipina emancipation, no, at this period. So, of course, hindi rin natin maiiwasan yung ano pag-continue ng tradition in terms of fashion. So, uh, di ba, formal wear would be the coat and tie, no? Kay tropical, no, ang mainit. Uh, tapos uh, the ano no the barot saya would 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 follow no certain silhouettes no from from the 1930s no hollywood no okay so in cinema we, it, it was dominated by musicals no uh, music such as those no no tapos yeah in terms of style so you have wavy hair so even yung ano no makikita natin na si simplify na yung silhouette no so straight no straight uh or although may pagkakulot may, medyo may pagka streamline na even makikita rin natin ito in in the design of cars no in the design of uh, shoes no and even yung uh, household appliances like electric pan and ano so for example, the streamline, no? the streamline design, uh, when adopted to a consumer product, makes it efficient. No? Efficient look lang. No? Uh, hindi naman necessarily performance, but it looks efficient. No? Okay? So, by, by the late 1930s, Manila no? became... No, an important tourist destination. It's a world city. No? Nandiyan yung China Clipper. No? So, these are the things you can see no, in Manila. So, it's a destination. No? However, the 1940s, we saw no, a lot of destruction. No? War. No? War. And after this war, there was a nostalgia for nations. So, we were reflecting no, on the things that we lost no, during the war. No? So, uh, however, Prior to, to the war, streamlining continued. No? For example, high ally. No? So, buildings like uh, Times Theater no? were streamlined. No? So, in order for the Philippines to continue, yung, yung, ano, yung Manila, uh, to, to, to save it from destruction, it was declared as an open city. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na magre-resist yung mga tao dito. Uh, ano ba? So yung yung pagpasok ng mga Hapon, no? However, may may nasira pa rin. So uh, during this period, ano-ano ba yung mga innovation, no? So we have the concept hat, no? Uh, concept hat as as a as a military 
ano no uh, transportable architecture no so yan yang yang concept hat which is the new jeep no so uh, na madali siyang itayo at saka very versatile yung uses niya no so the tandaan niyo concept hat is a is a is a war artifact no tapos of course the architecture uh, were geared towards defense no for example yung mga hapon they they prescribe no uh, several designs no for bomb shelters no? No? pero makikita din natin na there was uh, in the 1940s nagflourish yung other art forms like yung yung bakya no the the bakya no? naging wala kasi ano no ibang creative creative outlet yung mga Pilipinas. So, bakya. Tapos, of course, yung, yung, yung mga magazine. So, there, there was a lot of propaganda no? to rechannel uh, the loyalty from the American to, to the Japanese. So, uh, this period also, no? uh, makikita natin uh, during this period, nagkaroon ng revival ng teatro. Kasi, papa... Ano yung 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 theater because walang pelikula may embargo sa ano ng mga pelikula at saka mga stocks not to produce films uh, nagkaroon ng ano nagflourish no ang ang teatro noong 1940 so yung mga artista sa pelikula ay bumalik sa entablado so katulad nitong mga ito pero may pelikula yung Tatlong Maria uh, Ilang pelikula ba ang na-produce noon panahon na yon? So, yung Tatlong Maria at saka yung Dawn of Freedom. No? Okay? Yan. The Dawn of Freedom. So, actually, The Dawn of Freedom, you can watch it sa, by YouTube. So, the destruction, no? um, the destruction of the city no? uh, happened no? in February 1945. No? So, many of the irreplaceable treasures of colonial architecture were decimated in a matter of days. So, I don't know, yung the beautiful, monumental, classicist city built by the Americans were destroyed by American bombs. No? So, you will see, it was flat. No? But, as a consequence no, of war, we became an accidental nation. So, a new republic was born in the aftermath of war. From the ruins of war, a new architecture was to emerge. And this was nurtured by the language of modernity. Modernism would be adopted no, as an antidote no, to the colonial practice of the previous regime. Kasi, di ba, modernism was, was about simple geometry, the abandonment of ornament, and these ornaments, so particularly the classical orders, were associated with the American colonial practice. So, it was logical for the new nation, the new Philippines, no, to use modernity to graph its own new architecture. Okay? So, and the foundation, no? uh, so modernity provided the foundation for our new nation and it wanted to to ano no to 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 build no a new capital no in Quezon City because Manila was totally devastated and the logical thing to do was look for a new space no to build uh, the ano no the new the new bureaucracy no so going back no so kasi nga, di ba, nagkaroon ng trauma, no? nagkaroon ng trauma sa, sa digmaan. So, alam nyo ba na ang mga unang, no? ang mga unang buildings na nag-rise from the ashes ay sinihan? No? So, pero itong sinihan na to, nagkaroon ng bagong genre. No? Di ba, kung, kung nakita natin mga bucolic musical noong 1930s dito, it was replaced by hard-boiled action and violence. So nagkaroon tayo ng bagong genre, ito yung guerrilla war film. Kung saan dinidepict, no, yung mga struggles ng mga Pilipino sa kamay ng mga Hapon. So ito yung ngayon, Orasang Ginto, Garrison 13, no? So at saka yung ano, no, uh, 
48 horas, no? So, ito yung mga ano, ito yung mga pelikula. So, of course, may mga musical pa rin, pero ito ay pinapakita yung valor at saka yung resistance, no, ng mga uh, Pilipino, no, sa sa mga Hapon. So, kaya hanggang ngayon, uh, yung iba sa atin galit pa sa Hapon, no? So, yan. Uh, Tagumpay, Garrison 13. So, pinapakita sa mga pelikulang ito yung mga ruins, no? no? Yung mga struggles ng Pilipino, yung mga torture, no? So, yan. At saka yung mga, yung mga ruins, no? Ruins. Tapos sa paintings din, no? yung mga visual art, also try to, to, ano, no? To, to look back, no? Doon sa trauma nga, no? Yung, yung, yung mga destruction, mga pains, mga war episodes, no? So, dito sa mga sa mga guho na ito, no? At saka yung mga ano, mga rape, no? Torture, no? Uh, makikita natin yung modern art, no? Take for example, yung poverty, no, in the post-war years are captured, no, in the works of H. R. Ocampo, no? The contrast kung saan may pulube, no? May pulube na kumakain pero ang backdrop niya ay modern building sa likod no which is a, a sign of progress na iwanan siya no ng progress so ganun din dito sa Begar no may kita mo no ano na hindi, hindi realistic yung depiction ng ano no ng, ng ano so it's more modern more the use of uh, stylization the the use of uh, geometric figures no uh, simplification of form, no? abstraction. So we see, no, the the ano, no? the background, no, as a modern city, no, cubic volumes, no. So post-war Manila in ruins also provided, no, the inspiration for artists, no, to 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 create yung ano, no, yung cubism, no. So, di ba, for example, the barong-barong, yung transparent cubism, ba, squatters by Vicente Manansala. Kasi nga, di ba, there was mass homelessness no, after the war. So, kinakapture no, uh, in the works of Vicente Manansala, no, yung mga plight of the people through transparent cubism, no, barong-barong by Angkukok. No? So, post-colonial modernity, no, titignan natin, nabanggit na natin to so as a refresher lang so modernism coincided with post war austerity no kasi nga wala nang ano no? so take for example ang ang ano no mass produced ang mga building halimbawa yung mga mga houses no sa Quezon City mga project no project sites no mga bungalow no so mame itatakal natin to isa 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 so nabangit ko kanina so there was an abandonment of the classical style na niyo classical sa in favor of modernism so for example makita natin sa UP Manila yung idrisenyo no ni William Parsons no makita natin paglipat no sa Quezon City ay masisimplify na siya so magiging ano no cubic no magiging simple geometry pero no what do you notice the the massing no the massing and the logic of space the spatial arrangement is still classical there's a symmetry no may symmetry pa rin no pero in strip mo na yung ornament so this is in a way we call this type of modernism strip classicism so Yung mga Pilipinong arkitekto, no? so immediately after the war, uh, Filipino architects no? were deployed to study the architecture no? in Latin America and the United States. No? And from there, we were able to see, no? uh, we were able to benchmark no? the buildings we are to build for the new bureaucracy. So, pinadala doon si Antonio Toledo, si Juan Arellano, si Cesar Concho, si Wanakpil, no? So, and we will see, no, that they will meet, no, different architects from Latin America, uh, particularly, no, they, were in, they will be inspired by Latin American modernism because Latin America was also tropical, no? So, Juan Arellano would uh, submit, no, yung kanyang plano for the new capital city, which is Quezon City, okay? So, Para kay Juan Arellano, it should represent no, uh, the power no, 
and the optimism and the I don't know the the progress we aspire. So para sa kanya, modernism was well suited, no, for our new nation. No? Pero of course, when we look at this, mayroong konting vernacular uh, layer, no. On top, mayroong ano, no, mayroong ano, mayroong traditional Malayan roof. No? This was his proposal for for the centerpiece, no, for the capital city of. Of Quezon City, so this was his proposal, no, uh, for the Constitution Hill, no. So a group of uh, uh, civic buildings, no. So on a plateau in in Batasan. So today this is the the area in Batasan. So may kita natin it overlooks, no, the Marikina Valley and then the Sierra Madre Mountains, no. Ito yung unang sisikatan ng araw. Napakaganda, no. So it was. Arellano's version of Washington D.C., but a modern city. No, so Quezon City was a modern, no, was a, a, a laboratory of modernism together with the University of the Philippines. Kung saan dito nag-experiment, no, yung mga Filipino architects uh, to design mo tropicalized modernism. So dito itinayo yung ano, no, yung dinisenyo ni Federico Ilustre yung Monumento ni Quezon kung saan makikita natin yung personification ng tatlong isla na bumubuo sa Pilipinas yung Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao ito yung original na sketch no na niya no? so si Ilustre din na meet niya rin si ano no Frank Lloyd Wright no so so noong 1950s ang ano no ang ang development no ng ng housing no uh, ay mabilisan kasi nga very ano massive yung homelessness no, because of the destruction of war and the the most uh, logical no typology was the bungalow no bungalow na merong ano no meron siyang mga standard no standard components no so by 1953 no the philippines no uh, wanted to project to the world that it had Reset no? from the ruins of war, and it's a new nation. Kailangan may pakita niya in the global arena, no? Na kasama siya sa ano, no? Sa mga bagong bansa, no? So kaya hinos ng Pilipinas ang Philippine International Fair, no? Kung saan highlight yung commercial, industrial, and cultural progress na 500 years of progress. No? Remember, 500 years of progress, hindi lang ngayon. No? Noong 1950s pa sila celebrate. Ha? So, hindi bagong idea yun, ha? Okay, so going back, makikita natin na uh, sa Luneta, Luneta was the... Uh, ano, no? the, the center no? of the celebration. So, makikita natin ibat-ibang pavilions ng ibat-ibang bansa. No? So, yan. So, yung painting dyan na makikita natin ay kay Botong. No? So, these are temporary pavilions. No? No? Ganda, no? So, talagang ano, no? Pero ang ano, no? Ang isang makikita nating centerpiece in the development so merong water feature at meron tayong makikitang very unique no na gateway that is uh, designed by Otilio Arellano the gateway to the east no so it was topped by a golden salakot and this salakot no will launch no yung mga motif no na gagamitin ng mga architects no na igagraph sa mga modern buildings so the salakot will be the instant no identifier of nationalist identity. No? So, this was his uh, drawing. No? And UP, by the way, was a new campus. No? So, ito yung, ano, no? ito yung unang area uh, para mag-exodus ang bureaucracy papuntang Quezon City. So, UP no? was a laboratory of modernism kung saan makikita natin yung tropicalization ng modernism kasi makikita natin merong ano no may mga added layers no yung tinatawag nating uh, brisole no so itong brisole ay sun shading devices no they are ano no uh, naka-layer no yung facade with horizontal and vertical fins no 
so to modulate light and heat no from directly affecting the interior of the building yeah so these are the experiments no of cesar concho in modernity no so nung una flat may mga flat roof pa no but later on we will know that flat roof will not work in a tropical monsoonal climate no so this is the uh, palma hall no the arts and si arts and science building before but ngayon it's known as palma hall so meron talaga so makikita natin brazilian modernity no so but Makikita natin there is also this tendency to copy no or to emulate no uh, prevailing models of modernity abroad no take for example Cranbrook was the inspiration for for Quezon Hall no the the admin building of the University of the Philippines no okay. so you have a void no a central void with a colonnade no uh, but actually looking at the ano no looking at the the building it was actually a merger no, of two designs so this is Cesar Concho's design for for no, no, for the administration building Quezon Hall and notice also it the building is it's as if it's floating now because it's suspended by a series of piloti piloti are thin uh, thin uh, supports no uh, typical no, of uh, modernism no? and then you will see now it's you shape yung plan and then on the left and the right side you will see mosaic no now with fi figurative uh ano no mosaic uh ano art no okay so tapos and this is this is the proposal naman of Cesar Concho no which belongs to an earlier generation art deco so so what happened was the ano no the merger no of two designs so makita natin pinaghalo no kaya makita natin uh, when you go to the Quezon Hall in UP merong hints of art deco nagpersist pa rin yung art deco in the 1950s so ito here you will see Cesar uh, meeting Oscar Niemeyer no Oscar Niemeyer is a, a very important figure no in in the modern movement in world architecture no? so Tignan natin, no? So, si Cesar Concho also took inspiration from Oscar Niemeyer's uh, design, no? For St. Francis in Pamplua, no? And Concho rearticulated it in his design for the chapel, no? The Protestant chapel in UP Diliman, no? Using the saddle-shaped tin shell architecture, no? Okay? That's Pamplua uh, by... That's the chapel of St. Francis in Pamplua by uh, Oscar Niemeyer. And this is in UP by Cesar Concho. But notice, there's a... Sabihin natin, we, we can easily dismiss, ay, nangope si Cesar Concho. No, he's not. He just... Uh, he was inspired by the form, no? Yung thin shell architecture. And yet, sa sides, it, it's quite open, no? So, medyo transparent. So, maaliwalas pa rin. Uh, and uh, kasi walang air conditioning so iba naman yung ano niya iba naman yung interpretation niya it looks geometrically similar but the articulation of space within is quite different no so the period also in in cinema was uh, simply dominated to ng mga adaptation ng mga comics no makikita natin uh, from comics to film no si ba darna Malbarosa, tsaka Jezebel. No? So, also in the 1950s, uh, Filipinos were recognized no? as an important uh, film producer in the world. No? So, di ba napasali tayo sa Venice? No? Film Festival through the film Genghis Khan. And uh, we won no? several awards in, in Asia. No? So, also in this period, interior design, no? Uh, was becoming uh, an important no, profession. No? So, dominated by figures like Willy Fernandez, uh, Ted Berenguer Topacio, no? uh, among others. So, the tulip, uh, this is a space age. The 1950s was a space age. So, in tulip chair, no? uh, the, the tulip no? was also uh, reflected no, in the fashion, no, in the new look of Christian Dior, which was adapted also in the silhouette of uh, Filipino dresses. No? So we have also Balera. No? No? So the Mestiza dominated no? the print ad no? and the movies. No? 
So this, this period also saw no, the rise of uh, a new technology, no, the television and radio as a form of entertainment. No? Okay? So as I mentioned, the 1950s was the space age. So this space age would be reflected no, in the architecture. No? For example, the spaceship-like building of Leandro Luxino. Uh, so here, no, we will see the 1950s Filipino architects were experimenting with the plastic potential of concrete no, to generate uh, exciting sculptural volumes. No? So this was made possible no, th through uh, intense mathematical computation. No? So, for instance, no, itong building that were, were produced no, uh, using mere plywood forms. No, it's a thin shell concrete, no, about three inches in in, in, in thickness. Okay, so that's Leandro Luxin. No? So this is his original plan. No, so talagang it was a pioneering building. No? So it had circular altar, kasi. Bakit circular? Kasi uh, pre-Vatican pa ito. No? Ibig sabihin, kasi yung pre-Vatican in the 60s, humarap na yung pare no? sa, sa, sa congregation. Uh, nung dinisign ito, there was no uh, need no, for the priest to, uh, to face no? the, the congregation. No? So, Actually, perhaps, no, perhaps uh, Loxin was uh, inspired by Pierre Luigi Nervi's uh, design no, for uh, the Palace of Sports no, in, in Rome. No? So, ang ganda ganda. No? So, it, the building was a collaboration among uh, artists. Uh, later on, they will become national artists. Loxin, uh, Napoleon Abueba for the double sided cross, Arturo Luz for the Terrazzo Flooring, Vicente Manansala, for the Via Crucis. No? Okay? So, it's celebrating its 50th... Uh, 50th ba? Uh, basta, it's celebrating a, a, hall, a hallmark no? in its life. So, the 1950s also we saw no? uh, new buildings no na, na, na dome shape no na spaceship like like the Araneta Coliseum so uh, for example residences would would look like spaceship no? like this uh, house no of Artemio Reyes designed by uh, Marcos de Guzman no? so we had also no our ano no nuclear reactor no? so pansinin natin even the water tank no would look as if it's a it's a rocket no about to be launched no in space no? so uh, works no like saragossa yung yung ano no may new technology like the folded plate no so here uh, folded plate yung yung ano no yung concrete is shape mo siya para siyang tinuping papel no because that geometry provides stiffness and strength no to the material so in this case uh si oh, Saragossa, si Jose Maria Saragossa, developed a geometry uh, that looks like an anahaw no? uh, for this uh, Union Church. No? There's a Union Church in Makati. So perhaps he was uh, influenced no? by Oscar Niemeyer's Cathedral of Brasilia. No? So Brisole were were ano, no? were introduced to the building in the 50s and the 1960s to tropicalize no the climate insensitive geometry of modernism okay so manila builds in the 1960s and building soared no so yan na develop no so of course we see brisolets pa rin so the works of uh, Federico Illustre this is the veterans building it was demolished no so it looks like uh, a juxtaposition of a modern building and a spaceship no so UST no engineering building no it, it also employs the the brisole no? UP no and uh, this is by Roberto Gaite this is the capital of uh, the province of Rizal no so 
it's iconic for its diamond shape no as uh, articulations no at the facade uh, so uh, it's located in barangay capitolio in pasig uh, now it's demolished it, it the, the site is now estancia no okay so yeah look, look at the, those uh, graceful no diamond uh, shape uh, ornament no geometric ornaments articulating the facade so probably he was influenced no by the oscar niemeyer's alvorada falas so makikita natin na many of our buildings were br medyo hawig sa brazilian because brazil is also a tropical country so the 1960s was uh, a time no to revisit mga vernacular motifs no so Alimbawa, pero sinimulan nito ng, ng Manyosa Brothers when they designed no? the pool house in Balara. No? In Balara. Look at the, ano, no? Look at the, the pool house. It's a, it's a, it's port, uh, a Malayan roof. No? So, yeah. So, it's a landmark. No? It's landmark, it's a landmark in Philippine architecture because it's it's one of the first instance no of uh, of employing vernacular roof silhouette no? so the nine in 1957 no uh, nagpropose si Federico Ilustre ng buildings for our capital no so he was criticized for this design because it's a juxtaposition or mishmash no of geometrical forms you have a dome you have a bahay kubo you have a, a centerpiece that that looks like a kalasag so uh, the building is composed of two wings the congress i don't know the the congress and the senate uh, so it was inspired by the kalasag or the uh, tribal shield uh, so ito yung ano no? this was the proposed drawing but it, the, you know, it was highly criticized so that's why the project uh, did not uh, push through uh, so for instant no for instant uh, philippine identity even itong ano no, national science uh, board building no yung, uh, it's a it's a tin shell building notice also that there's a carabao no carabao is an element to Filipinize no? modern buildings. So sometimes uh, we are prone to self exoticize. No? Uh, this is our one of our pavilion in Seattle, no? World Exposition. No? Notice the the wooden uh, spoon and fork. No? Na very iconic siya. No? Nakikita natin ito sa sa mga kusina natin no? na, na naka-display. But it was an invented no artifact no to portray Filipino identity na medyo ano no primeval no so yan yung ano no wooden spoon and fork no so held by Sofia Loren no? so the carabao no the water buffalo of the Philippines no makikita natin sa Department of Agriculture, another building designed by Federico Illustre. You see the brisole, no, or or the ano, no? We call this ano, no, yung, yung pier screen or breeze blocks, no. So breeze blocks are modular decorative ornament to allow for cross ventilation. But upon close ex inspection, you will see that it's an abstraction of a carabao head, no. So let's go to the 1960s, no? which is uh, the cult of the youth and social decadence. No? Bakit ganun? No? Kasi flower power, no? so yung mga teenage movie. So, diba, it was ano, no? diba, it, ito yung mga time ng ano, no? yung flower power, no? yung mga psychedelia. Uh, so, these psychedelic uh, graphics no? were a consequence no? of uh, hallucination. No? when taking drugs so psychedelia was ano ba may ano, may influence ng ano no uh, recreational drugs no so yan so makikita natin no uh, yung space age no yung yan makikita natin yung mga atomic pattern yung mga molecular pattern makikita rin natin sa mga tile design at saka mga product design so 
yung bakit kaya ang lalaki ng ulo no nung <laughs> yung mga hairstyle noon kasi it was ano no uh, the bouffant no the yung mga tinitis na ganyan it's as if it's it's one uh, it's like a spaceship no going to the heavens no kaya malalaki ano so yun no? one of the ano no? one of the important news no at this period is uh, ano no the yung pagkapanalo ni Gloria Diaz sa Miss Universe no so when the Philippines no uh, conquered the universe so conquer while well, well, US no landed the moon the Philippines conquered the universe so nakita natin diyan moon landing ha huh? Okay, so the bungalow, no? Bungalow yung uh, im- uh, ano no, yung domestic ideal prototype, no? So makikita rin natin na no nonsense din yung mga interior design. So modern din, no? So plastic, no, became an important, no, uh, product no of the period, pwedeng gawing furniture, yung Tupperware, toys, no. So it's everywhere, it's even in in the furniture, no? So the plastic was uh, a great invention. So for example, yung yung ano no, yung Tupperware allowed, no? 'Di ba? Women bonding, no? So kasi 'di ba after the war, no? Uh, domesticity, no? Suburban ideals, no? Ang babae ay nasa bahay. So, yan, mag-Tupperware party sila, no? Magluto sila ng marami and then keep nila sa ano, Tupperware. Okay, so even ano, no? Y- yung mga mga furniture that we had, no? Made of plastic steel, no? So they were also, no? They were modern, no? So in 1964, we we joined no, the world exposition through a salakot no pavilion no salakot yan alam yan so na salakot na mukhang spaceship no so yan yung sinasabi ko sa inyo parang nag self orientalize tayo yung mga mga nativist icon sinelebrate natin kasi nga nakita natin na yung modernism parang they they are empty no parang wala siyang instant familiarity no so kailangan lagyan natin ng ano na no? ng, ng mga ornaments na familiar tayo katulad ng salakot no ng kalabaw no ng vinta no so no 1970 we also ano no we also joined no uh, the world exposition but in a more poetic no manner yung ating pagrepresent ng Filipino Uh, identity no so here uh, looks in no design no a modern asian shape no it's an abstraction of the the vinta no the vinta or the the sails no of the vinta and at the same time it's ano no uh, upward no parang uh, up diagonally uh, it's soaring no diagonally it's as if it's a depiction of our aspiration as a nation no, towards modern progress so that's the binta the inspiration so this is the design of uh, Luxin no, from his original plans so it's a very graceful building and inside it's a uh, veneered with uh, Philippine hardwood no uh, look at the lighting fixture it's made of kapi so makita natin hindi literal si Luxin no to interpret no Filipino identity it's poetic and it's lyrical no? okay so in the 60s uh, architects no uh, uh, were questioning no uh, their role no in in architecture no can we develop a native architecture and the frontispiece of this question was max restaurant no which is a self orientalizing building because we do not have a tiki t- tiki ano no tiki Polynesian tiki no and look at the roof no wala namang ganyang roof sa Pilipinas so it's actually an imagination of a, of a south sea no of a south sea architecture na Malayo Polynesian no? so Felipe Mendoza no would use uh, gargoyles no in the form of uh, naga abstract stylized naga no for his building in Holiday Hills no yan okay so Manyosa no uh, Manyosa will use no uh, the you know, no the the dominant no roof silhouette no of Malayan architecture when when he designed the Sulu restaurant 
No? Of course, again, with the with a gable ornament no, in the form of uh, simplified naga or the mythical uh, water serpent. No? So here is the the Sulu restaurant in Makati. No? It's a landmark building. And notice also the, the landscape. No? Uh, may mga sunburst dyan, uh, designed by I.P. Santos. No? National artist for architecture. So we also see no, the use of folded plate no, in the works of Nakpil. Medyo si Nakpil ay nagpapunta na sa ano no, sa sa scalp, sa sa soft modernism. We call this soft modernism because it used concrete. No, uh, it exploit the plasticity of concrete to generate. Uh, sculptural forms, no? so soft modernism. This is a, this is a, a bank, no, uh, still uh, intact, no, along Quezon Avenue, no? so we see, no, uh, Rizal Theater, no? Rizal Theater. So actually, makikita rin natin ito sa mga previous, no, design na hindi natuloy, like the UP Theater, no. SSS building. No? So, look at that. No? The jagged. No? The jagged geometry. Ang ganda-ganda ng ano, mga breeze blocks no? doon sa SSS. And notice also, uh, the folded geometry no? of this lobby is reflected in the light light uh, and shadow pattern no? in the terrazzo flooring of the lobby. Okay? So we have also Saragossa uh, creating a, ano, no, a, a huge sculpture no, articulated by curved uh, vertical fins no, in the Meralco building. No? Uh, it is clad in, in marble. No? It's a beautiful modernist building. So we also see Saragossa's ano, no, uh, building no, entirely wrapped no, with the uh, uh, with vertical fins, no. Yeah, this is our uh, international airport, no. So it's ultra modern, no. So the iconic, no, the iconic Film Life Theater, no, which which was demolished, no, last year to make way for for a new development. So uh, apart from being uh, an icon of modernism in the 1960s by Carlos Arguelles. Uh, the landscape was also designed by I.P. Santos. Okay? So, transparency, no? and it is also wrapped no, with uh, aluminum louvers no, all around no? to block direct sunlight. Okay? So, ang ganda-ganda sa loob. No? So, so, also, 60s, we saw the rise of uh, landscape architects I.P. Santos and uh, Dali Perez. No? Okay? So, 1960s was also a time to celebrate no, the Centennial of Jose Rizal. So, there was a, an idea no, to build a national theater behind no, the monument of Jose Rizal in Luneta. So, the Centennial Euphoria of Rizal also uh, triggered no, the the, ano, no, the the, the production of film like No Limitangere and El Filibusterismo. So, dahil ano sila, no? dahil gusto nga ng ano, no? maging modern, no? yung monumento mismo ni Jose Rizal ay nilagyan ng steel shaft. No? So, which horrified no? the people. It was designed by Juan Nakpil no? and uh, it was removed later because the people were not uh, prepared no uh, to see uh, an, a classical obelisk no uh, na ano no, na pinatungan ng ano no, ng, ng modern no, appendage no? so it was later removed so the 1960s was also a period of uh, spaghetti westerns exploitation films mga James Bond movies at saka yung mga kasi di ba uso nga yung ano Uso yung TV, so yung mga pelikula ay para mga TV show, no? So nag they are films passing itself as a movie, no? Yung mga pelikula na mukhang 
ano na, na walang logic na parang mga variety show no so yung mga banda yung mini skirt na uso the mini skirt was political uh, the mini skirt was a, a symbol of female liberation no? so we have color tv psychedelia no so we have also uh, the ano no uh, Leandro Luxin's proposal for the Philippine American uh, Cultural Center, no? which was not no, implemented. Instead, it was rehashed to become the Cultural Center of the Philippines, the centerpiece no? of Imelda's uh, idea of cultural patronage. No? So, it's a brutalist building, meaning brutalist, it used no? um, raw concrete, no? to generate no its uh, raw surfaces so this was no the proclamation of uh, uh, the marcos regime's power over nature no not only the power not to mobilize uh, the state resources but also the power to reclaim land from the sea no and loxin looking at the building it's also vernacular no but poetically processed no because we we see here no the the buoyant property of the building was taken from the visual likeness of the bahay kubo no the floating no uh, volume of the bahay, bahay kubo as it ano no uh, uh, as it is suspended no by by stilts no and then may water no may water okay and if you look at the the you know, no, the, the the original plan of Luxin, even the you know, no, even the the venation no, of the marble, sinasabi niya kung ano yung orientation, pati yung technique, no, yung yung technique nung kulduroy finish, it was bush hammered finish, no. So looking at this drawing, it is art in itself, no. So the 1970s and the 1980s was a period of the new society and the neurosis for identity. So under the martial regime, the ano no, the the masyado nang naging subversive, masyado nang maging ano no, decadent yung mga Pilipino. So uh, the new society no was initiated under martial law to rejuvenate no, Philippine culture. No, it held the promise of a cultural renaissance in the, its initial stages. No, Imelda Marcos during this period also extolled no, the Filipino architects. No, Imelda Marcos was an apostle of the true, the good, and the beautiful. No? Uh, so the period was uh, the period of bomba. No? So nakita natin climax of love uhaw no so itong bomba films na to was uh, ano no was one of the reasons of declaring martial law because of uh, the ano no yung bomba uh, the ano no the decadence no of the period it needs no social revision no so itong mga to yung mga mga publication na ganito no uh, there was a clampdown and censorship later. So, ang finabor no, <laughs> ng mga pelikula ay yung mga teen, no? teen idol films no? represented by Nora Bilma no? of the period, Guy and Peep. No? So, but the period is also a period of the edifice complex, no? which I define no, in my book no? as a syndrome that plagues the, you know, no? the, the regime no? to build large monumental edifice as a reflection or a symbol no of their power and authority okay so there is a, a a term no or or a word no now in in the oxford dictionary imeldific no which characterizes the development of the period no it's ostentatiously extravagant to the point of vulgarity so the no, no the operative term here no the building is built on on a at fa fast paced uh, monumental no and excessive to the point of vulgarity so imelda marcos was uh, an architecture addict no? yeah, yeah. so imelda marcos technically is an architect no 
because she was declared by the United Architects of the Philippines as an honorary architect because during this period, uh, she was the Minister of Human Settlements, the Patrons of the Arts, and the Governor of Metropolitan Manila. So she had many roles. No? But their omnipresence of the, of the conjugal dictatorship would be etched no? on the landscape, for example, the Marcos bust, no? and on uh, popular imagination, no? like in paintings, no? like uh, here, Imelda as a reincarnation of Queen Nefertiti and Marcos as a reincarnation of a great Datu. So they relied on the, uh, no, no, the, the, the myth, no? the Genesis myth of Malakas and Maganda. So, mapapansin natin that this period was backward looking. No? So, nanghihiram ito ng mga icons, mga knowledge systems from the primeval past. No? And I call it a palingenetic regime. No? Uh, Kasi nga, ano, uh, for them, illegitimate yung seizure of power. To, to legitimize uh, the, the seizure of power, there should be a cultural revival, a cultural renaissance, so to speak. So, the malakas and maganda uh, mythology no, became no, uh, a springboard no, wherein Imelda and Ferdinand would become the modern-day personification of of the Filipino Adam and Eve. No? So, what do I mean by that? No? So, take for example, the hosting of Trila in Manila, no? Malakas, no? and the hosting of the Miss Universe in 1974, Maganda. No? So, there was vernacular revival. For example, uh, history was rewritten. Uh, the Sarimanok was employed as a logo for the 1974 Miss Universe. And the Alibata or the Baybayin was reused. No? And the barangay, no, as, a, as a smallest unit of governance, were revived. No? So, the Bahay Kubo, the Fale, the Torogan would be the inspiration for the state architecture. No? So, there was really an attempt no, to create a unifying architecture under the slogan, Isang Bansa, Isang Diwa, One Nation, One Soul. No? So, and it was through the architecture of Leandro Luxin that we see this consistent approach no, to Filipino uh, architectural. So, architectural revival. No? So, may kita natin dito yung consistent yung paggamit ng cantilevered volume na floating, for example, in the Folk Arts Theater. No? So, these monumental buildings were, will also be used no? as a ceremonial backdrop no? to celebrate the ascendancy of the state. For example, in the Kasaysayan ng Lahi. No? No? And these buildings were meant to project no? Uh, the modern progress under the guiding hands of the conjugal couple, no? uh, the conjugal dictatorship. No? So, itong mga buildings na to were intended to host international events as a means of projection no? of uh, modernity no? in the global arena. Take for example, the PICC was, uh, was built no? to... to to host no, the IMF World Bank Conference of 1976 no, with the brutalist architecture of Luxin, uh, the fail site also, no, and other buildings of the period. No. For example, um, in order for us to be a modern city, we need a modern, no, a modern airport, no, also designed by Luxin, no, the Manila International Airport, and bridges no, were also constructed as a gift. No, uh, bridge of Love, the San Juanico Bridge. No? So the 1970s, 19, the mid-70s or 1976 was a period of construction boom wherein no? several no? several hotels no? were uh, built no? uh, using loans from the government no? because this infrastructure were, were necessary no? uh, for the hosting of international events. No? So so, even the aestheticization of the city. So, yung mga walls no, were built to cover up no, uh, the ugly side of the city, yung mga squatters. No, and these walls were whitewashed or painted no, with, with uh, art no, through the kulay anyo ng lahi. So, yeah. No? So, artists no, uh, were, were commissioned no, to paint no, these walls no, that blocks the 
the view of uh, urban shanty because for Imelda, no, the urban shanty was an anathema of modernity that taints the image of the city of man, no? which Imelda considered Manila as the city of man. Okay? Uh, so, pag nakita ng foreigner, ma 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 oh, it's an eyesore. So, kailangan takpan. No? So, yan. So, to clean the city, may, kailangan din ng, ano, ng, ng metro aid. So, yan. even water tanks, no? water tanks were decorated with a uh, large-scale mural. No? Even blank walls in, in Makati. No? No? So, to have a pedigree, no? a cultural pedigree, they built no? uh, a metropolitan museum no? and borrowed no? a collection from the British Museum no? to showcase no? sa mga foreign delegates when we have uh, international events. So, field trade was also uh, completed no, in a matter of seven days no, for the hosting of the Ungtad Five no, in 1979. So, uh, Imelda had the power no, to, to consolidate no, uh, or condense the, the Philippines in one cultural theme park, no, the Nayong Pilipino, no, uh, wherein architects, no, different uh, renowned architects were employed no, to design the different villages. No? And these were all uh, cohered, no? Co cohesively organized through the landscape architecture of uh, uh, I.P. Santos. So we have landscapes like uh, a miniature Mayon volcano, a miniature rice terrace. So uh, the 1970s was also, uh, I don't know, meant beautification of Manila. So, for example, the Planetarium and Luneta, no? yung ano, no, concert at the park, no? so the building of the mosque no? in, in, in anticipation of the arrival of uh, Al-Mumar Gaddafi, which never happened. No? So, it's a modern, no? modern interpretation of the Philippine mosque using okir patterns. No? And we have also uh, Muslim settlement, no? Uh, Muslim enclave in Maharlika village, uh, the the centerpiece of which is a is a mosque, no, designed by Gabriel Formoso, no, with uh, precast, no, ornamentation. So, sabi nga sa inyo, it was a period of looking back, no. So even yung mga mannequins, no, had to look native, no. So there was a, even a resort, no, Mer merong idea to to ano, no na iportray yung tasa dai no as the ano no stone age people no which was a hoax no so, so there was a revival no of uh, philippine costumes no and uh, barot saya so look at this now this is an interesting picture no imelda is looking at a mannequin no uh, modeled after her no? so it was also a period of uh, looking back talaga no uh, backward looking no uh, restoration no uh, restoration of the intramuros no? the metropolitan theater there was also no an attempt to, or, or no, an attempt to create no designer hospitals no uh, for example the philippine heart center no uh, the, the, the lungsod ng kabataan population center no and the, the the Philippine school no for for the arts no like the Makiling Art Center no? so for example this truncated pyramid no would be uh, the most uh, this was designed by Leandro Luxin this would be the most emulated no building form no, of the period no which will be applied to to no? so that's the inspiration no the windowless uh, pyramidal uh, house no? uh, of the Ifugao, no? the Ifugao Fale. So, makikita natin ito interpreted as the centerpiece of the Batasang Pambansa complex. No? So, designed by uh, Felipe Mendoza. Makikita rin natin ito na, 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 ano, no? na it's a rendition no? in, in ba as a Baguio Convention Center by George Ramos. No? So, there was a, a period also na there was an oil, oil crisis. So, modern buildings 
had to be designed because modern buildings they ano no they consume a lot of energy nung nagkaroon ng oil crisis nung nung 1970s buildings had to be re, ano no had to be redesigned no modern build had to be redesigned uh, to be tropically responsive and for example in the works of uh, Felipe Mendoza makita natin yung projection ng shadows no because shadows uh, has the ability to cool the building no so, yan. So, may pagka-regionalist, the Benguet Center, no? by Loxin. No? So, uh, buildings were also industrialized in the 1970s no? with, uh, yan, with those prefabricated components for the Bliss project. Yeah? So, this is the Bliss. No? So, diba? it's a it's a self ano no it's a self uh self contained community no uh ngayon parang common na to no yung ano no yung meron kang mid rise building no so Emelda was also no uh, an architectural theorist no so she's written a lot about architecture and uh, here now we see Manyosa no uh so yung backward pagka backward looking he Imelda wanted to have ano, no? uh, Filipino uh, looking model houses no? so for mass housing and this was the proposal of uh, uh, Francisco Manyosa. Manyosa also designed the Bliss in Guadalupe no? with, with the ano, no? obvious no? Uh, elements no? borrowed from the Bahay na Bato no? yung, yung, yung ganong arrangement. No? So the, the 70s was really the search no for the true filipino architecture so with the with the launching of a of a nation nationwide no campaign no to look for no uh, the true filipino architecture no? so even though no, the interior design was uh, of the period was inspired by this vernacular uh, renaissance no? so the period was also the period of uh, Diba anti uh, anti Marcos no through the social realist movement no? tapos we will see a lot of film no na, na anti thesis no for example the works of Lino Broca no Lino Broca is a is a grim depiction of Imelda's uh, brand of modernity so mapapansin natin sa mga pelikula ni Lino Broca lagi ang setting ay squatters no ito yung mga kino-cover up ni Imelda at si Lino Broca naman nire-reveal niya sa mga international film festival for example Maynila sa Koko ng Liwanag Jaguar Insyang among others so the period also uh, we saw the rise of uh, the mall no as for our consumer culture no so Vira Mall Rustans Ali Mall Harrison Plaza so they are no self-contained no uh, consumer paradise no? so also Bobby Manyosa experimented no with with bamboo no he used bamboo for the Eucharistic monument no bundled bamboo no to produce uh, this uh, tall monument no? for the centerpiece no for the coming of the Pope no so Bobby Manyosa also designed the uh, ano, ano, the Mindanao Cultural Centers, no, uh, with with a singular, no, singular plan, but clad in different uh, Mindanao styles, no. For example, Tausug, Yakan, Tiboli, Maranao. So, iisa ang plano pero ibat iba ang bihis ng uh, mga museo. Depende kung saan siya ilalagay. So, sabi nga 1970s may oil crisis, so Save gas, ride the love bus. No? So it's very, it's an icon. No? That blue bus no? is an icon of the 70s. LRT also was a solution no? for the mass transit problem of the Filipinos. So we had no? in, in, in Southeast Asia the first no? mass transit system no? by the LRT. No? And the LRT station were, were meant no? to to be designed as a bahay kubo, no? 
uh, di ba? Napansin nyo ba yun? No? When, you, when, you, when you enter the, the LRT1, no? bahay kubo yung inspiration. Uh, so, uh, there was a deliberate attempt no? to, to design. No? Yung, yung silong ng bahay kubo no? ay ginamit ni, ano, pinropose ni Manyosa to become uh, spaces no? of civic life no? like malls, with cultural presentations, no, with coffee, no, uh, at talagang ano na, it's a, it's a, it's a street of life, no. So we also see, no, an important building uh, to rise, no, in Ortigas. Uh, it's a tropical regionalist building, the San Miguel, no, uh, headquarters building. No? So it's a beautiful building, uh, inspired by the rugged terrain of the rice terraces of the Cordillera. So, it, it, it was very well thought of. You, you see slanting no? windows no? to avoid direct heat of the sunlight. No? And then the, the direct heat no? of sunlight it will be filtered by the, the green no? uh, vegetation. Here we see uh, a lot of uh, Bongainvillea uh, plant no? lining. No? Uh, the the terrace, no? okay. So it was well uh, thought of. So titingnan initially, even yung ano, yung, if you see the cross section, uh, studied yung wind flow at saka integrated with solar panels. Okay. So there was also a proposal, no, uh, to use coconut, no, because coconut, no, was the uh, for Imelda was the tree of life, no. So they received a grant, no. And uh, uh, to experiment no, on the architectural no, potentials of coconut. No? And uh, the result was the Tahanang Pilipino or the Coconut Palace. Okay? Uh, with the salakot roof and the uh, coconut columns. And you see hexagonal patterns as a geometry to generate the different rooms no, in, inside the building. Okay? Coconut everywhere. Coconut chandelier, coconut lampshade, everything is coconut, no? Coconut mosaic, no? Uh, but today it's no the, the columns, no? The external columns there are no longer made of coconut, no? But it's a uh, fiberglass made to look coconut. No? So uh, Francisco Manosa, no, was the father of uh, neo vernacular architecture and this was clearly expressed no in his uh, modern interpretation of the bahay kubo through his own residence in alabang no okay so the building no or the house establishes an environmental rapport no with its surrounding no okay so there was also a proposal no at the behest of Imelda Marcos to develop the banana house, no? I don't know uh, anong parte ng banana yung ginamit dito. Okay? So, also, the 1980s, we saw the rise of uh, a film Parthenon, no? The Manila International Film Center, no? Uh, the, the Manila Film Center, no? Uh, which is, uh, no, 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 uh, built no as our counterpart no to Cannes Film Festival so however we we know the tragedy behind no so we saw no uh, that the building no was completed 15 minutes before the opening no of the festival uh, okay so makikita natin no itong pagtatayo niyan uh, also saw a renaissance no in in building so uh, the excesses of the Marcos regime no? uh, triggered no, the People Power Revolution. No? After the People Power Revolution, we had uh, the, uh, no, no, a, a space for freedom. No? Okay? So, to celebrate that freedom, Manosa proposed no? uh, a monument no? Our Lady for the Lady of Edsa, no? wherein he, uh, no, no, he, his intention was to create no? uh, uh, no, no, a, a monument roof with a series of uh, uh, bahay roof, ano uh, no, no, sculptural bahay kubo roof, no? so pero ano uh, naging plaza na lang siya, no? so 
the Manila Film Center no uh, triggered also yung ano yung yung pagdating ng bagong ano no bagong genre ng pelikula no na sex ang ano no primary ano niya ang primary element no yeah. we had uh, yung yung mga dingding lang ang pagitan yung mga pene yung mga penetration movies no we have also the punk movement no the baguettes no and also the rise of uh, postmodern art no like, like the ano no, um, conceptual art no by Roberto Chabet no so works by Ankyukok no uh, Solomon Saprid no so there was a, a plurality no in artistic expression so Junyi's installation art and path no? so uh, Imelda Kahipis and Endaya's assemblage no prayer is heroism so these are no these works no were were I don't know were were created no uh, within the the climate no of artistic freedom no because diba Imelda had uh, had uh, no, no had favored a particular type of art no during their reign so uh, ngayon after the EDSA revolution there was plural expression of uh, creativity no of artistic expression no so hindi na purely classicist no so we had Julie Luch thinking nude no and uh, Agnes Arellanos uh, so makikita natin dito that art is no longer about beautiful no so it can be shocking it can be uh, thought provoking so the 1990s no was a period of postmodernity sustainable design and anything goes style so the 1990s po sinabi natin postmodernism di ba nga uh, for the modernist ornament was a crime no and or ano no uh, less is more so pagdating ng 1990s less is a bore no so ngayon there was a return no a resurgence of ornamentation so yung classicism before na tinanggal natin iba ibinalik natin in a in an exaggerated manner no so yung mga cornices mga arches no at mga classical articulation na may brightly colored garish colors were reapplied to the building to reanimate the boring no boxes of modernism take for example no uh, the king's court building no in in makati was a celebrated early example of this postmodernist tendency with the use of arch no and classical moldings no tapos we also see no the the you know, no deconstruction no or different types of uh, parang identity na metro bank no mga, mga metro bank branches na in the 1990s parang ano no it's anything goes style no because postmodernism it's about ano no uh, humor it's about double coding it's about uh ano no a quotation from the past no so for take for example tectite tower no so you will see a lot of ano no an abstraction of of classical ornaments no so the stepped silhouettes no so the use of garish colors no uh, the revival of classicism overscaled folk classicism no was also a brand of postmodernism and deconstruction no so deconstruction yung like sda no so high tech no also was one of the language of modernism so yung yung ano no robotics cyberspace no were the expression of this high tech no building so high tech yung clad siya sa shining ano no shining shimmering uh, glass facades no with uh, uh, antenna with steel articulations no to make it look uh, like ano no like a machine no uh, for the 21st century no? okay okay so the period also is about uh, 
yung yung tinatawag natin micro cities no and the mall no and the rise of the mall culture no yung ano yung sinasabi natin micro city like for example the rise of Rockwell City Eastwood and even uh, Fort Bonifacio na enclave development no so this enclave development is ultra no ultra global no meaning that they deny now when you're inside they deny the existence of third world poverty no so they are a self-contained city they are a fiction no of a city now take for example yung ano ni McKinley Hill no it's a po it's a postmodern expression no it's a poor imitation of uh, Venice no or an idealized or a clean version of Venice now but we know it's fake and yet we enjoy it because that is the postmodern condition we enjoy fantasy and disnification okay so we also see no uh, mga allusion to the past no like Edgar Talusan Fernandez yesterday today hope no the representation of inang bayan but the inang bayan is represented here as a common filipina so in god we trust no so mapapansin natin there is the use of uh, familiar no elements from the past rearticulated for the present consumption no so this is millennium hoax by wire toazon no? so we have also this mama mckinley no this is ano no um, a, a very a political no political uh, painting no? so definitely it's a it's a borrowed no it's a postmodern borrowing no from a from an archival photograph where in binago lang yung mukha ni Makinli to portray uh, the post colonial condition no so the period also we see a lot of the use of vernacular material kasi uh, ano no nagsisimula na yung green architecture, yung sustainability, yung recycling, no? uh, became a buzzword. So, the use of natural materials for for the interior. No? The period also saw no? the rise of uh, uh, ano, no? media. No? Media conglomerate no? like ABS-CBN, GMA, no? producing films, music, etc. And even multimedia. We also see, no? yung yung ano no yung yung mga genre mga OFW films mga AIDS film no tsaka yung mga massacre movies no tapos meron tayong so called na tinatawag na pitu-pitu movies no yung mga pelikulang ano may social relevance na pinroduce sa loob ng pitong araw no so uh, iyan no so there was also a renewed interest no in OPM no uh, through the works of Andrew E Francis Magalona and other artists so we see no the 20th century no uh, there is no singular style that we can privilege no because style was very fickle no so there is a diversity of style so itong 100 years na to ang daming nangyari uh, sa Pilipinas no at nire-reflect nitong mga estilo na to yung mga pagbabago no sa lipunan no at kung paano ang mga designers, architect at mga artists ay ay ano no ay nagre-respond no? no at hindi natin masasabi na ano na puro kopya-kopya lang tayo, puro borrowings no we have this ability na so uh, itong sinurvey natin we can see the ability of the Filipino no to adapt mediate appropriate no a particular art form and make it our own no so makita natin we have the ability no to adapt no a foreign language and make it our own so with this thank you for listening have a good day
Maraming salamat, Sir Gerard, for the trip down the 100 years of art and architecture in the Philippines. Also, thank you to everyone for sending in your questions. We have already selected a few to start our question and answer for this afternoon. The authors of the first three questions are the lucky winners of their very own copies of Crockies. So let's start by welcoming back uh, live in Facebook, Dr. Gerard Lico. Magandang hapon, sir. Uh, good afternoon no, to all. So nakakapagod, no? So it's a two-hour lecture, no? So it compresses, no? Uh, an entire semester, no? Of the study of uh, architecture and art. No? So I hope, no? Na- nakuha nyo lahat yung main points, no? In two hours. Yes, sir. So if you're ready for the question and answer, let's dive right in. Our first question, sir, is from Jefferson Marcos Abiba. Do you think that designers of today can still preserve our built heritage? And what are the measures? Most built heritage po kasi are demolished in the name of development, even if my petitions. And only few of our architects today are into conservation and preservation. Thank you. So that's okay, our first question. So, okay, so unang-una sa lahat, we can learn a lot no, from older buildings, no? technology, the way people live. No? Pero we have to, we have a question. No? Hindi kasi lahat ng, ng lumang building or buildings of the past ay worth preserving. So there are certain criteria that we have to meet. Remember that uh, ang buildings no, ay kakawing siya ng, ng real estate development. So I believe there should be a balance between nostalgia, sentimentality, and ano, no? and uh, economic sustainability. Kasi kung ipipreserve mo nga siya, kung hindi naman siya uh, economically viable, eh, eventually it will lead to demise and decay. So we, we have the question, no? what makes the building significant? No? Uh, ano, no? Is it a rare architecture? No? Is it uh, a manifestation of... Uh, of a particular technology of that time. So, marami. Tapos, of course, we have to consult. No? Hindi lang naman iisang tao ang nag-determine ng significance. So, ito ay ano, no? kasama dito yung mga stakeholders. So, malalaman lang natin if a building is worth preserving kung gagawa nga tayo ng ano, no? public consultation at pag-aaralan natin yung significance nito. So, uh, what are the measures? No? Of course, uh, Pag-aaralan natin, no? we have to study, kaya nga tayo nagkakaroon ng ganitong ano, no? uh, lecture para for us to have a, a new, ano, no? a fresh eye no? to look at the past. No? Na it is a consequence of, of different no? socio-political uh, forces no? na yung, yung isang building o isang art form does not exist in the vacuum but it is, ano, no? it is heavily, no? heavily influenced by societal forces. So, most of the heritage na nakikita natin are being subjected to demolition. No? Uh, kasi, uh, bakit nga ba? Kasi nga, ano, no? uh, maraming, ano, no? maraming, maraming uh, reasons. No? But uh, as people, we have the power. No? We have the power to, to clamor no? to our local, local government, no? our different government agency. And uh, this happened no, in, in Rizal Memorial Coliseum, for example. No? So it's the power of the social media, of the different uh, heritage advocates, no? and, and the architects no? Uh, who, no? Who, who stand in the way of uh, uh, redevelopment ng Rizal Memorial no? for various reasons, no? cultural significance, technological, rarity, as an art deco architecture. So maraming ano, no? maraming. So nakita natin that it was ano no it was uh, conserved no for a particular e- international event so may kita natin that even old buildings now can have a second life no as demonstrated by the Rizal Coliseum and even the Metropolitan Theater which will soon open no? okay so uh, today we we have also institutions of learning no teaching uh, Ano, ano, conservation. For example, University of the Philippines, University of Santo Tomas, and uh, in, 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 ano, ano, in the Visayas, University of San Carlos. So, but, hindi, pero, 
it's ano no it's a graduate no it's a graduate course no? but i believe even in the uh, undergraduate courses uh heritage is being infused no in in the ano no in in the teaching no in in design no sa tingin ko doon nagsisimula yung ano yung conservation so actually all architects no all architects di ba ang isa sa sinasabi sa pag nag-aano tayo nagsumusumpa tayo ng ating ano code of conduct isa sa mandate natin is to to see to see to it that architectural legacies are preserved no so it is the task of all architects not just conservation architects Thank you for that sir. Um magandang take away din po for those who are watching us that um exchanges like this um napapalawak yung narrative on on discussions on different aspects of design architecture and um conservation most importantly. So our next question sir is from Laj Songko. What does um make Philippine architecture unique despite of it being influenced by different foreign styles is it still possible today to develop a new art slash architectural style okay so of course uh yes it, we we have yet to develop because uh Philippine architecture is not static no so it develops not like any other architecture in the world no uh it is in continuous uh it is continuously being influenced now by external forces so no architectural culture no is free from uh influence no uh everything is hybrid no diba everything is hybrid so ang tanong diyan what makes philippine architecture unique it's unique because it is uh designed no to address the needs no and cultural requirement no of the filipino no so iba yun so tapos of course it is a it is a ano no it is an index no of our creative powers no to respond to a tropical ecology no that's why we we see no we see common features of Filipino architecture as being maaliwalas so lagi tayong nagsasabi ng maaliwalas maaliwalas pero naiintindihan ba natin yun so ito yung quality ng architecture natin that is uh, responsive no to the tropical climate both in terms of temperature both in terms of uh, lighting and bo- bo- also in terms of uh, creation of sense of being diba pag sinabing ang maaliwalas ang mukha mo ibig sabihin ano no you are in a good disposition no so it's a it's a sense of well-being so na-translate din yun sa architecture so uh, also Philippine architecture there's a di- ano no from vernacular to the present day there is always this uh multifunctionality involved no unlike in you know, no? in in western in western or european no? european euro american architectural types a particular space is designated to function as as ano no? given for example kitchen uh, ano pa ba uh, bedroom kailangan yun lang ang gagawin meron siyang singular function but for us filipinos we like no we like to convert no we like to to make our spaces flexible no accommodating uh every aspect no of everyday ritual diba yung bedroom yun, hindi lang naman bedroom yan no study room diba uh, ano pa do kay kumakain tumatanggap ng bisita so i don't know philippine architecture is about multifunctionality celebration of tropical tropicality and most of all it's maaliwalas no I think yun yung ano no tapos it's ano no it's a uh, it's an expression of lightness no parang lightness no yun maliwalas nga so we are still to develop no to develop our Philippine architecture but of course uh, kasi we are ano no we are inside no or in the Philippines that's why we do not have a distance no to to ano no to really see what philippine architecture is but for a foreigner madali niya makikita ito no uh, kasi nga ano tayo eh, we live philippine architecture every day no so pag mayroon certain detachment diyan nasa foreign land ka mas ma-appreciate mo ah ganito pala yung philippine architecture but remember 
uh, our nation is still young. No? So, more than 100 years. So, samantalang yung iba, Chinese civilization, uh, Western civilization, napakatagal na nila. So, uh, our Philippine architecture is still evolving. And we cannot, no, at this point in time, ikahon no, na certain characteristic yung Philippine architecture. Thank you, sir. Um, it, it's nice to note also that during our discussion on heritage, no, it's organic and ever-evolving. It is not an ecstatic uh, subject matter. It has to be functional, relevant, as well as responsive to our way of life. So um, going moving forward to our third question, sir, from Mr. Danny Ko. Can you consider or can you coin the modernism movement in art and architecture that is uniquely Filipino? What has this contributed to international art and architecture movement? Okay, so yung modernism natin ay produkto ng ating unique na kasaysayan. So mahirap no, bigyan ng particular brand or name no, yung ating type of modernism. But for a particular episode in history, sinasabi natin, it's post-colonial modernism kasi nga, it happened immediately after the war. No? So, post-colonial modernism because it's a response no, to create no, uh, an architecture that is modern, that is expressive of the aspiration of the new nation. And we see that in the, in the 40s and the 50s. No? Tapos, of course, meron din tayo tinatawag na bagong lipunan modernism. No? Si Bap, Pag sinabi kong bagong lipunan modernism, I just coined the word, no? Uh, it's it it's a it's a type of modernism associated with the Marcos regime, no? Because at that time, talagang the 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 regime, no, poured its resources to develop Philippine architecture, no, to express its patrimony, no, at the same time consolidate, no, yung national imagination because you need, no, the architecture, no? necessary to have uh, to to visualize no to visualize the imaginary nation because nation is invisible no it is through the power of architecture that uh ano, no? this national imagination becomes real and palpable no so that's why you see that the motto no diba? the slogan of the period isang bansa isang diwa one nation one soul kaya makikita natin Sa bagong lipunan modernism, it's quite brutalist and it harks back to uh, the pre-colonial past, no? whether literal or abstracted. So, modernism, mahirap siya. Ano? Tapos, meron ding brand ng modernism no? nung, nung 1950s sa tinatawag natin na soft modernism. No? Bakit natin tinatawag na soft modernism? Kasi nakita natin yung mga gawa ni Luxin, ni Saragosa, ni Concho na ginagamit yung semento no? as, a, as a moldable, no? sculptural form. No? So nagiging yung architecture parang nag-reverge siya on, on the sculptural side. No? So the, they explore no? the plasticity of concrete Kaya ano, very soft. Kaya yung ano yan, di ba, mga rounded, no? Kaya tinatawag siyang soft modernism. Mahirap magbigay ng isang branding, no? Sa, sa ating uh, modernism. So, our scholars, no? Our architectural historians has yet to to create, no? A nomenclature, no? To call our brand of modernism in a tropical context, no? Alright. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have more questions from our viewers. We have from Mr. Uh, Glenn Dale Go. In this age of new technology and the revival of the classics, is there a way to revive the then escolta and let them be introduced to the Filipino public today? Okay, so magandang tanong yan, no? So, mabubuhay lang ang isang lumang lugar kung ito ay repopulate, no? Di ba? Katulad niyan yung mga unang ano no yung mga unang instances no na magiging relevant uli. Kailangan i-infuse mo siya ng new meaning, new relevance at saka i ano mo siya no uh, bigyan ng bagong significance. Kasi kung hindi mo ginagamit or in, yung mga inabando na spaces, hindi rin naman to magfo-flourish kahit i-gawin mo siyang ano no uh, i-preserve mo siya pero hindi naman ginagamit no at hindi pinapahalagahan. 
wala rin mangyayari dito. So, maganda ang ginagawa ng Escolta Revival Movement no? na pinangungunahan ng mga millennials na katulad natin, no? No, na nagkakaroon ng bagong ano, no, kahulugan at relevance ito sa panahon natin kasi tayo mga millennials nabuhay tayo no sa sa panahon ng digital age, no? So, lahat virtual, no, 'di ba? Ngayon nga, no? Ang ating pag-uusap ngayon, araw na to ay mediated ng virtual space, no? Ng screen, no? Pero bilang millennial, <laughs> millennial daw ako. <laughs> ano, no? Nag nagki-crave tayo into uh, an authentic experience, no? That is physical and grounded in, ano, no? In in the past, no? So that's why Escolta, no, is is uh, ano, no, it's a venue, no? or is an expression of this yearning no uh, to create uh, a physical no space that we can call our own no so kaya maganda kailangan i-repopulate siya no bigyan ano gamitin no gamitin natin so halimbawa magpi-preserve ka ng ano ng, ng teatro no ng teatro kailangan ginagamit mo siya kasi kung hindi mo siya ginagamit it will just be externally a beautiful structure no na na walang memory, walang bagong memorya no or ala-alang nagaganap doon na mag-aangkor no sa pagpapahalaga ng taong bayan. So, sa tingin ko, yung ano no, maganda yung binubuhay natin yung isang lugar sa pamamagitan ng paggawa ng mga events no. At of course, may mga advocacy no na nagaganap doon beyond no, beyond conservation, no, beyond of course kailangan din may economic ano no. 'Yon, lagi ko sinasabi kailangan may economic feasibility. No? Kasi this economic feasibility will ensure the continued maintenance no? and operation of, of a heritage site. Nasagot ko ba yung ano? So, kailangan uh, ang bagong pagpapahalaga no? sa ating mga uh, pamanang lunan. No? For the revival of our cultural heritage. Next, sir, for uh, another question from Jenica Nicodemus. Sa papaanong paraan pwede i-integrate ang new architecture or the modern without compromising the value and character of native architecture? Ayun. Ay, magandang tanong yan. Ano? Magandang tanong yan. So, dapat, uh, ano, na, lagi natin, ano, na, pag, when we work in an, for for an old no when we, when we modify or add on sa isang lumang structure we see to it that its authenticity its integrity and significance is uh, being ano being maintained so that's the that's the ano no uh, significance no is always the important ingredient no in 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 any preservation conservation project so we see to it that it is maintained so how do we do that now because buildings in order for it to live on no uh, a second life or a prolonged life it needs some form of reinvention no? reinvention meaning uh kasi di ba for a, meron lang certain lifespan ng mga building at saka meron siyang specific technology na but but from time to time it needs to be updated but that updating or sense of modernization under the brand of rehabilitation must be no uh, must not compromise no the significance so alimba when we add to the building it should be subordinate no meaning hindi nagsusort tam yung inad on natin doon no kundi it will it will blend well no but it should be distinguishable no that that this portion was an add on as a contribution to of our generation so tapos also whatever we do no whatever we introduce to the building no must be reversible no must be reversible maibabalik natin siya sa kanyang original state no without uh, sacrificing no, the structural integrity of of the of the host structure no ano pa ba no reversibility subordinate so it should also be uh, compatible no compatible in terms of use so it should respect no the previous use of of the building no so or or the native character no of of, of the architecture 
Okay, nasagot ko naman. No? Yes, sir. Um, we have a lot of questions. Unfortunately, this is the last that we can accommodate for uh, this afternoon, sir. So after the 100-year journey of uh, Philippine architecture, Sherilyn Agas would like to ask, with the changing uh, dominant house typologies that were discussed, as well as the trends, how would you describe the current Filipino architecture and since architecture responds to changes in society, how do you think will this pandemic influence the architecture houses decades later? Ah, okay, magandang tanong yan. No? Because ano, no, every health crisis, no, pandemic, will yield no, some form of renaissance no, in the aftermath no, of, of, a, of a health crisis. No? Like what happened no, in, in the 1920s during the Art Deco era and uh, after the Black Plague, no, nabuo yung Renaissance. So there will be a lot of rethinking, no, uh, in terms of architecture. So architecture will become more, no. Uh, katulad ng sina sagot ko dun sa isang question sa Instagram, it will be about the creation of ano, no, uh, spaces, no, of well-being, no. So uh, it's not a matter of style, but uh, ano no dapat yung domestic spaces must maintain our well-being mentally and physically no so you know i believe in a post pandemic house we 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 will be more ano no more cons- conscientious about uh the use of ano no uh, natural no natural elements no to combat no potential pathogens no like letting ano no letting sunlight no the disinfecting power of sunlight in ano no now, of course we also create spaces no for isolation no uh, so na, we also learn no from the past that na, nangyari na rin to nung ano no nung, nung pandemic no nung no early 20th century no nag no, yung bahay kubo na compartmentalized no tapos uh, nagkaroon ng good ventilation no yung nag nakita natin no magbabalik uli yung ano no magbabalik yung tried and tested elements no that makes this our houses more healthy no so the surfaces no will be will be antibacterial so madaling linisin no yung mga ganon no yung mga ganon ng sa tingin ko uh, in a, the post pandemic domestic prototype will will be ano no will be of course climate responsive no uh, conducive to uh, the well-being no tapos of course may spaces of isolation just in case na may sakit yung isang ano no ma-isolate mo siya so parang sa tingin ko no uh, yun ang mga ano yun ang mga yun ang mga trend na mangyayari Right, such an interesting end to the the whole discussion, sir. No, looking at the future, so it was a very interesting journey that we had with you this morning. How both culture and architecture evolved over one hundred years. Popular culture, um, emergence of social practices, social psyche formation, and of course, your political movement. How inter it interacts with the built environment, thereby shaping the way we experience our physical reality. So, maraming maraming salamat for your time, uh, Sir Gerard, for joining us this uh, morning till the afternoon and for the very informative walkthrough that we've had with our audience. Maraming maraming salamat po muli. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We'd love to know what you enjoyed most about uh, Sir Gerard's lecture. So, please leave us a message in our comment section here or post a story on Instagram and tag us at Metrobank Art and Design. Congratulations to our contest winners. Please message us on Facebook to claim your prize. Viewers may also request for an e-certificate of attendance by leaving us a message on Facebook. Let us continue our conversation online. Baka nabitin pa kayo. Make sure to like and follow us on Facebook at Made Competition and Instagram at Metrobank Art and Design. Thank you to our partners, Center for Filipino Architecture, Arkitekturang Filipino, Architect Lico, Facade Books, and the United Architects of the Philippines for supporting this webinar. Muli, we wish you all a good afternoon. Maraming salamat. Music